Hello and fuck cape shit. Welcome to another episode of Shitty Web Comics Weekly, brought to you by our subscribe star backers. Uh, the link to our subscribe star is below, where you can get uh, access to all the uh, real videos. Today, speaking of real videos, uh, today we um, are uh, going to do the basically the first ever review of Cyberfrog 2 Wrecked Planet. Um, a couple weeks ago on Kiwi Farms, Ethan um, uh, posted basically screen caps of like his Dropbox folder, something like that, which is like, here's all the, uh, you know, here's all the Saber Freak stuff. And it's like, oh, okay, neat, wow. And uh, you can see, first of all, none of it's lettered. Here, let me just show a general zoom. But none of it's lettered in this. But then also in the, um, a lot of the later pages, it's not even colored yet. So clearly not done. Um, it remains to be seen if this is really all of the pages or if these are just all of the mostly finished pages. But the thing is that also, for, all, uh, uh, on top of that, 20, uh, you know, batteries at 20%, it says. Now, it, it's, uh, I guess it doesn't show up on here. Can't zoom into it in the right way. Can, or can I? Hold on a second. If I, let me see if I zoom in enough. It's going to just be up in the corner. Though. No, it's above that button. Whatever, though. Um, first of all, the uh, the name Wrecked Planet, it, it's, uh, it, it's a great example of Ethan having no idea uh, what the kids' memes are about these days. He just hears it. And then goes, oh, wrecked planet, oh, you know, wrecked. Hey, d it's like, uh, you know, if you get fucking totally annihilated in uh, Counter Strike or something, or like some people are yelling on the internet, it's like wrecked, and it's just some kind of goofy way of gloating uh, from ten years ago, from like 2010, 2011. and then from there it became shrecked, and then it's. Like, you know, the, the the way memes are always mutating and shit then turn into uh, a, a fucking it's already donkey. And then and then at some point um, it turned, you know, years later, it just turns into somebody going somebody. And then, you know, that's the whole end result of that. But uh, being 10 years behind the times here, the, um, Ethan calls the comic Wrecked Planet. Uh, for no reason, for no, um, not even a discernible reason, just for no reason. There is no reason why he called it Wrecked Planet, aside from the, pl the fact that the planet destroyed in post-apocalypse. It's like, yeah, but why the meme name? It's like, because uh, uh, memes, uh, everyone loves memes, right? Just completely, uh, uh. Uh, just out of his depth and just clueless, trying to connect with the younger audience. Oh, kids will love this. Kids, kids don't even recognize Wrecked anymore. Um, yeah, it's very, very old. It's yeah, like old shit. Yeah, by by twenty thirteen, it was out, and you know that's that's the thing. That's uh, how a lot of comic book nerds go, and um. Especially, like, the industry comic creators are, are always going to be so many years behind the time. So when they... And this was true of, of um, comics from years ago. It's like stuff that was a meme in the 70s, you'd see it in some of the 80s comics. And then stuff that was a meme in the 80s, you'd see it in the 90s comics and that kind of shit. Comic books, American comic books, the, um, the industry is always... Um, 10 years behind the actual culture. Usually music is uh, further ahead, <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, or like a more underground experimental uh, comics, uh, people who are really willing to push the envelope, which Ethan, of course, is not. He, you know, he's an industry man uh, from the beginning. He always aspired to be part of the industry and uh, his attitude and his behavior and uh, his psychology reflects that very obviously. Um, 
But anyways, uh, so the the comic itself uh, starts off. Well, the previous comic was like an in medias rest flashback of uh, you know the ho- evil hornets took over the planet and si- and it's just uh, you know cyber frog narration exposition dumping the entire book basically about his goofy dumb you know we weirdly way too serious backstory about something that was obviously an an attempt to come off as tongue in cheek but was clearly just um one of the many many ripoffs of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles it was it didn't even uh manage to be as timely or um self-aware as um adolescent radioactive uh karate hamsters or um I forgot what that the the name of that comic was, but it was something like that. I was I know I'm pretty close, but um, yeah, Cyber Frog came out in the mid '90s after the um, the that trend had been milked dry and then forgotten about, um, to the point where it's, he, it's he, clear that there's nothing else to it either. It's not like he had yeah. some really amazing new take. Yeah, he on. didn't. Yeah, he didn't have a fresh take on it. It's just like, uh, it's a frog. Like he even uh it's uses yeah, he even uses the same um like it it rips off some of the exact same sort of um uh visual cues or, and uh visual memes like um the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh you know, were big into pizza and it's like turtles eating pizza, Woo, but you know, that kind of thing. And uh, in Cyber Frog, he loves fried chicken. And then there's a very blatant April O'Neil stand-in that shows up. And uh, But uh, uh, we can get into that more and into um, the, uh, the, the fuller review, which isn't going to be here. We're just going to brush on this very briefly here. But um, the previous, like Cyber Frog 1, uh, or uh, Cyber Frog Blood Honey, was uh, uh, the Hornets took over the planet already and they destroyed it. And it just ends with Cyber Frog is he's captured and he's a captive. And then in this, Wrecked Planet begins... Oh, you got a nice hero there. Yeah. The fucking hero completely failed to take out the bugs. Incompetent loser, Cyber Frog, um, in a way representing Ethan Van Skyver's life and his personality... Um, it, it, but not as accurately, of course, as you would uh, see um, accidentally uh, portrayed by himself on his streams, where he just has no emotional control and um, no impulse control and is uh, constantly having to backpedal. And um, in and, and a lot of uh, situations where he has to sort of delete uh, previous streams because people were using it to debunk things he was saying later. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the leech tuber, you know, uh, nerd signaling fake geek, uh, community where, um, Ethan was like, oh, uh, the, the new Star Wars movie, it's so great, you know, The Last Jedi is a great movie, and then everyone else is like, oh, Last Jedi sucks, and, and Ethan deletes his positive video about Last Jedi. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's terrible. I hate it too, everyone. It went broke. It went broke. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> but so the um, yeah the, the end of the first Cyber Frog was really just, you know, big flashback where nothing really happens. Just, I'm Cyber Frog, and the world got taken over. And then it's that for, like, 48 pages of what was promised to be a 68 page comic well actually 88 pages and then uh you know he didn't even deliver on that and then he claimed that it was finished and then he later uh, and more recently claimed that it was actually um that he rushed it he had to rush it to finish it because of the critics pointing out that his comic was over a year late by that point so he's sort of blaming yeah. critics for releasing an what he calls an what he admits is an unfinished comic, and then it looks like but the thing is that this reveals that that obviously wasn't true. This reveals that you can see just from skimming this, and we'll get more into this in the bigger review. 
is that he doesn't really understand anything about structure. Like the previous uh, comic ended with uh, Cyber Frog is encased in amber or whatever the fuck. It's like he's a uh, prisoner. The, the planet's taken over. And then it looks like from here, now I'm just going by what Ethan chose to show, is that the uh, second comic starts where Cyber Frog is slightly wounded and that he's now he's free somehow in a way that doesn't get shown. Um, and then he attacks a hornet, and then it's like uh, a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, then page two is just a big splash page. So you can see it's just action, splash page, action, splash page, and then uh, about five pages later, just some characters are just happen to be standing around in the same forest, meeting each other. This is obviously the... Um, this would be so fun. <clears throat> this is such a sophomore... Just a, a childish fucking mistake. Yeah, yeah. this is something that somebody who's never really made a comic before would do. Is just like, oh, two, you know, here's action, action, action. Then two characters happen to be in the same area. And it's like, oh, no, we're in the same area. Coincidentally meeting up is yeah. like, why? Why are they there? And it's like, why it doesn't come? matter why they're there. Yeah, it kind of does. Why Your come whole he story is kind of predicated on how this happened, why it happened. And just you random... Know, random characters like here uh page five is like um kind of a weird reminiscent reference of uh um the um the the mysterious uh girl from uh one more day i was trying to think of the name of the comic but that um it was like the joe casada comic the one that's considered to have ruined spider-man where uh mysterious little girl that was supposedly based off of his niece or something it's something creepy and the way that ethan draws humans is definitely creepy the the anatomy is usually very wonky and bizarre but uh um this one's kind of this one kind of reminds me because it's a girl just all in red and everything is red about her to the point where he's like what is she supposed to look like and he just went red it's like okay and you can see that the colorist also is clearly yeah. doing the heavy lifting on the art here Little um, Red Riding Hood or some shit. Yeah, basically. it's literally just Little Red Riding Hood, Mephisto, whatever, demon from uh, from One More Day for some reason. It's like, who is this character? They weren't in the first comic, I'm pretty sure. Um, but going to, like, page seven, uh, the April O'Neil stand-in shows up, and she grabs uh, Cyber Frog's like giant spike things on his shoulder with her bare hands and it's like are those it, a, are, are those a typical body part on a frog yeah I, i'm trying to think i don't remember seeing any frogs that look like that or a toad see that's that was another thing point people pointed out is that cyber frog is basically designed or originally was designed like a toad and people like that that's not what frogs look like and ethan do, didn't know and didn't care um because, I mean... None of that shit will ever matter to him. Cause... Yeah, well, it doesn't matter to comic book fans either, of course. They're not they're not going to notice. They're not going to realize. And it's not... And ultimately, it's true it isn't important. What's important is the story. And you can see that the fucking... The story's very slight because... I mean, the story's not important. It's just there's nothing to it. There's no water in it. Though it's it, completely empty. One of the most important things well, that rap. comic book fans will never realize is that you can, even without the lettering and the dialogue on the screen or without being able to read it, you can usually just get the general gist of a uh, of a story, of what's happening in a story just by seeing the art. I've read a bunch of uh, mangers that were not translated where if it's drawn coherently, where the structure and the layout is done well enough you can see that um you can you can kind of generally tell what's going on even if you can't tell what they're I've saying i've been translating one recently i've been translating a dojin and uh fucking it's funny like i basically already was able to infer 90 percent of the fucking uh the the, mm -hmm. the narrative the yeah. subtext just by being able to look at the pictures and judge what's going on. Yeah, from the body language and the uh, the things going on. Now, like, say, uh, this page seven here. 
judging by this, it's the, uh, well, here, page six is like the chick meets cyber frog and they hug. It's like, oh, I love you, cyber frog. I'm in love with you. Uh, person like, uh, who's not gay. Like, we're going to fuck a duck. Literally <laughs> fuck a duck. Literally fuck a duck. But, but anyways, the next page is they're talking and then the way some of these panels are, are uh, laid out and constructed, there's not really space for dialogue. I don't think Ethan really understood that. I don't think he, he made the proper space necessarily. But um, on this page, it's like they're talking and then the girl maybe is going off, but she's like so pitch red. Like her face is like demonic red and it's like clearly she's evil. And she's, like, making some weird scowling That's face. The thing is, in the first panel, it's just that she's wearing red. And then mm -hmm. in all these following panels, she's completely red. Yeah, she's getting redder and redder. It's like, how are they not seeing this? But Cyberfrog's saying something. And then uh, April, the not April O'Neil is yelling at him, grabbing the arms. Is she going to be slicing her hands open, though? Yes. Uh, um, but also I look guess. at the look at the size of her head. It's bizarre. Her head is gigantic for the rest of her body. It's it's such it's a, a perfect example of Ethan Van Skyver's art, where it looks like he took mismatched pieces of body parts and sort of slapped them together. Well, it looks like for the tits also, and also kind of the the torso. Yeah, they're not, like actually they're all at weird angles. Yeah, it's there. The the arms, the mm -hmm. arms are fucking like, they're really fucking wonky looking. Yeah, the, it looks like the the arms are all connecting at different places. Like he never learned to sort of draw the the shapes first and how they would connect. It looks I'm like sure he that, uh, was never expected. Nobody ever gave a fuck when he was working for um for Marvel uh, and DC. Yeah, that's the thing about Marvel and DC is they. They don't really care if you even understand anatomy. You just have to make it look like the other books they're putting. They want that house style or, or something that imitates it or something that, that, you know, has that expected style. It's sort of like circumcision. You know, women just expect it. And that's how comic book fans are. Comic book fans just expect it. It's comic like, well, book fans are, comic book fans are very like, very much like women or Jews. Yes. Or Jewish women. I mean, what is the connection there? Is there a connection there? Perhaps. Anyways, um, so we will, uh, if you want to read our review of the rest of the comic, though, where we're going to get more in depth, uh, check out our subscribe star below. Uh, as usual, I don't there's know if a you bunch can even of other call reviews. It more in depth when we're talking about something like this. Yeah, there's there's not much to dig into with this kind of thing, of course. Uh, and I know people are like, oh, you can't review a comic that doesn't have the lettering. Yeah, I can. We can, especially because we we, we're capable of seeing beyond what other people are capable of. We're the ones who know how. Yeah. Um. And the thing is that we, you know, the same thing happened with the previous comics, and we ended up being completely right. I mean, we were also the first people to ever point out that um, stuff like uh, Lone Star and uh, and some of the other uh, Mike S. Miller comics had giant continuity flaws. Nobody else, not a single person in Comicsgate ever noticed that or recognized it. It wasn't until we did it. We're capable of seeing and, you know, um, observing the uh the uh how a comic is laid out you don't need to be able to read the dialogue of a comic to be able to understand what a comic is showing you and uh we'll be getting basically into the rest of that in uh the video that will be on your subscribe star so if you want to see that go check that out uh, it costs money of course, because and normally all this stuff used to be free but we can't make it free anymore because um, because people would uh, used to fall slack for specifically for our reviews, we would review comics, and people would hit us with false copyright strikes for our reviews. Um, and you know, people in Comicsgate did not stand up for that. And uh, who's going to stand up for us if we don't do it ourselves? So, uh, you know, uh, check the well, link below. You know, I'm just look at just look at the uh, the industry. Look at the uh, yeah. Ultimately, you have to start blaming. The foundation, the source of it, yeah. which is comic book fans themselves. This is the source of the problems with the industry, is people from the industry, like this, bringing their industry problems 
into the indie comic scene and acting like they're indie comics people now. So, anyways, yeah, uh, check out the links below in the card link to go to our subscribe star and should have listened to shitty webcomics. <laughs>